Joining me right now to assess the situation is House Foreign Affairs Committee member Michael Waltz. And Congressman, it's great to see you this weekend. Thanks very much for being here. I want to get your take on the threat of, of communist China. And you were among the first to really raise this issue. Is this administration doing enough about it? Well, Maria, they're taking some steps. Uh, they just added another 37 companies uh, onto what they call the Commerce Department's entity list, and including a major cloud computer, including a firm called BGI, one of the largest genetics companies uh, in the world. Uh, and they've made, had some restrictions on the Chinese semiconductor industry. However, uh, their China policy is constantly at conflict with itself because you have those that see the national security and economic threat that it is, but then you have so many others, uh, with John Kerry leading the charge, saying, "No, we need it. Uh, you know, we need a conciliatory approach. We can't be too firm uh, because we need China's cooperation on climate change." And as long as as uh, the Biden administration is talking out of both sides of its mouth, the Chinese Communist Party will take advantage of that discord uh, to advance their aims, which are absolutely uh, to replace the United States as a global leader. And I am very pleased to see some Democrats uh, finally getting on board with that reality. Well, what a joke that China is going to adhere to any rules around climate change. Is this not the biggest polluter of the world? No, it is. And in fact, the, the Chinese are opening more coal-fired power plants right. than us and the rest of the world combined. And the world's largest solar panel factory in western China, staffed with forced slave labor, the solar power factory is powered by coal plants. So for everyone who feels sanctimonious driving around their Prius, uh, needs to look themselves in the mirror for the human rights abuses that they're supporting and actually the emissions that they're supporting coming out of China. Uh, so it, it, it's uh, we, we've got to wake up to that fact. They're taking advantage of it, uh, number one. And then number two, Maria, we need to wake up as a country that they have entered into a Cold War with us. Uh, we need to start thinking about it and treating it that way. Uh, and the, the decoupling that so many people are afraid of is actually happening. But China's driving it because they want to create dependencies uh, on them from yeah. our pharmaceuticals well, I, to solar yep. panels to on down the list. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, nobody wants a war, but they've actually started one. Whether it's a soft war, an economic war, or what, it's it's the CCP starting this. And, you know, you look back, you look at the COVID-19, uh, you know, unleashed from a Wuhan lab, and then China's cover-up. You look at the surveillance balloons surveilling American, and then this fentanyl crisis. It's already, a, there was also a big focus on the Hill this week, but Attorney General Merrick Garland seemed to ignore China's role in the fentanyl crisis. He testified that this this epidemic was unleashed on, the, on purpose by the Mexican drug cartels. We also got this emotional testimony from a mother who lost her two sons to fentanyl poisoning. And then after that, you'll see President Biden's response to a question about it. Watch this. You see, you talk about welcoming those crossing our border, seeking protection. You're welcoming drug dealers across our border. She was very specific recently saying that a mom, a poor mother who lost two kids to fentanyl, that I, that I killed her sons. Well, the interesting thing is that fentanyl they took came during the last administration. <laughs> and he's laughing about it and he's blaming Trump. Yeah, that's just it's that's just disgusting. And it's heartbreaking uh, on the part of, of that mother and so many other moms. Maria, by point of comparison, we've lost more Americans to fentanyl than in the worst year of World War II uh, in terms of casualties. So look, at the end of the day, we need to go on offense uh, against these cartels. We need to use every tool at our disposal, including military assets, to target them, to degrade them, to cut off their finances and cut off their supplies. We did the same thing in Colombia in the 90s against the Medellin and Cali cartels. Uh, and we need to send a message to the, gover the government in Mexico that if you won't step up we will. We cannot have an ungoverned space run by paramilitary 
international organizations terrorizing our citizens. I've introduced legislation to authorize the use of military force. I'm pleased to see Merrick Garland's predecessor, Attorney General Bill Barr, uh, write an op-ed supporting that move. And we're, I'm doing this alongside Representative Dan Crenshaw. We know what it means to treat these groups like the terrorist groups that they are. They are more like ISIS than they are the mafia. Uh, and we need to unleash holy hell on them. Yeah, and that's the op-ed uh, this weekend in the journal by Bill Barr. The U.S. must defeat Mexico's drug cartels. Uh, that we can no longer tolerate narco-terrorist cartels. I've made that point a number of times that these drug cartels are using armor armament uh, similar to the military of Mexico. I'm talking huge tanks and guns, uh, and, and that's what our border right. patrol are faced off with. Yeah, in, in a recent operation, Maria, they uh, killed or wounded 50 Mexican soldiers and shot up their aircraft with heavy machine guns until the Mexican military withdrew. Uh, so, I, I, again, you know, in the 1990s, we were running around the world trying to arrest al Qaeda leaders and treating them as a law enforcement problem until we realized the hard way, the national security threat that they were uh, and began targeting them. Uh, with military assets. That's the same approach and mind shift that we need when it comes to these Mexican cartels, which, by the way, are being funded, supported, and supplied by the Chinese Communist Party uh, as, as a proxy. We need to wake up to that fact, too. And that needs to be number one or number two on Biden's list as he deals with uh, President Xi uh, with, alongside with COVID that they unleashed on the world. Yeah, China and the Mexican cartels, two items that this president is not responding to, uh, certainly not aggressively. Congressman, thank you very much. We'll be watching your work on this. Mike Waltz joining us this morning in Florida. Thank you, sir.